Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So Q's part here, it follows something, some one principle called FIFO, right? Which is first in, first out. Which is first comes, first out will be the basic principle of this. And uh, in order to fulfill this, we need a list which can actually maintain the sequence or which can maintain the orderness of uh, the elements whatever we are adding right so that's why for queues we can directly take something called a link list or also we have something called priority queues right priority queues again priority queues and link list are like you know they are like again uh, the same uh, list class but only thing is we can directly use a, a direct collection item called link list to actually build a queue right so let us see what it what exactly uh, are the queues here and before going to that let me take this i hope if if uh, persons are arranged in this way right in this way let us say right so let us say people uh, are actually standing up in this position right then uh, there is a queue where so we have got few uh, people let us say in this queue if the person which is standing at the top or at the front side is called as an head and the person which is which is at the end is called as in a tail of a queue right always and always will be interested on the first per the first whatever element is uh, there at the first because we will be uh, you know getting the things in a queue manner so that you know we can read out so we'll see uh, better things today in queues, right? What exactly we can do, right? First, let us create a queue. <coughs> let me take a new class here. Yeah. <coughs> So let me handle this exception part. Right. Yep. So Q is something which is like a iterator again. Right? You cannot instantiate a direct Q. Right? Q is again a package or a class under util package again, right? which is same as a generic class or I can say it, it will take certain you can actually restrict your queue items with some uh, restricted uh, data type or user defined or or uh, existing data types right okay let me just restrict that with integer today right integer right I right. let me take it as q1 is equal to new now if i try to instantiate q right you can see here it is taking it as uh, anonymous class because q here is something which is in that interface you cannot instantiate that right if you do that you can see it will actually take all the inner inner methods whatever we have right so we cannot instantiate this instead what you can do is you can take any one of the uh, sort or uh, any one of the list which is ordered list right but obviously you cannot take any set because q in q there can be duplicate values right there can be duplicate values for in order to have a duplicate value and a ordered list obviously you have to go for a linked list right which we have learned in uh, uh, collection items under list right but you cannot take any of the set here because set when you try to insert any duplicate value we'll see what happens when we actually insert a duplicate value it actually replaces the old uh, duplicate value and inserts a new value that is what happens but in that case it it is not it it doesn't hold good for our queue right so this is how we define uh, a queue basically right and now there are uh, three different things which we have here the first thing is adding an element where you can actually add right uh, different elements to a queue and second thing is you, have, you can remove an element right because you cannot play around with the elements which are in between this right because in queue 
it always like in a closed pipe you can only see uh, the, the guy who is standing here can only see one guy who is at first right and here people will be entering in that way adding is nothing but people are entering from one side of a pipe and remove function what it does is it does the same function as we have seen in pop so yesterday in stack right we have seen something called pop function right the pop what it does is in the stack right so whatever element we have inserted into stack whenever we do pop the last inserted one will be getting out and it will be removed from the stack and it will return the value of the last or uh, the last entered value here remove does the same thing but it will remove the first uh, guy in the queue right and it will take out this take out the value and it will return that value that is nothing but a remove and third important one is we have something called uh, uh, element element is something which will give you the head of a queue the, the current head of a queue as such it will give you something like the current head of a queue head is nothing but the person who is standing at the start or a value which is uh, added to the queue at start at first is nothing but a head head of a queue right and this element will return you that and this element will not remove anything it will just give an information that yes this is a uh, first element of a queue that's it only the data part interaction will be done using these things adding will add a queue removing will actually remove a queue and i mean add, removing will actually remove the head of a queue and return the value of that value that uh, uh, item there right so we'll see these three uh, items over here now no let me add few items q1 dot add of let us say 12 q1 dot add of 145 q1 dot of let us say 345 let's okay. take some more items much bigger so this is what is uh, our adding the items into the now how can we uh, check the head item so just say q1 dot let me just say element we have something called element this you can see here this will return you integer why because we have restricted our q item with integer uh, value so uh, internally even your internal sense will give you that yes the element uh, uh, element um, internal method of a queue will give the integer value right that is what it is now let me run this right you can see 12 12 is our head of a queue which is the first one now after this element let me just take out one value which is let me just read the queue which is q1 dot remove right you can actually do things like you know remove and remove this one because you have seen that this is q is again a collection item right you can do all the things whatever you can do in queues which is retain all right? with respect to the other queue you can compare this queue remove all right in the same way with respect to the other queue you can do but the only restriction is that right it you should follow the principles of queue otherwise there won't be you know any use of this but it provides uh, multiple functionality for you to even touch the items which are in between yeah okay let me call it as a remove and then let me call element again right so here let me run this yeah you can see q1 dot element was 12 and when i removed it remove in the sense the head of a element uh, head of a queue got removed returned the value 12 and then when i did element which means my uh, the existing queue's head is 145 it gave us a 145 right same as the same pop we have done remove three times which means you are actually removing the three items 
fact now you can see it 12 is a uh, first head and then we removed the sum of values from q 12 145 345 and then the latest is 657 now let me remove one more item and see what actually it does give when i run this you can see it gives an exception let me just uh, Right. It gives an exception over here, right? which is exception because if there is no a item uh, in queue and if you try to do something called remove or element, right, it will give an exception. Now, here, let us say I'm doing one more remove. Right now, uh, you understood that we got exception at here at this place, right? Let me comment it out. And now you can see here uh, we are calling four removes, which is we are actually reading up all the items in queue right and we are checking out what exactly is a next item when i run this you can see again it's a none right which is i am trying to touch something which is not there that is nothing but your null exception right so this is how you read a queue uh, you add a queue now they are something uh, we have seen something called three different method which is add remove and element in parallel to these three we have got three more uh, I know internal methods which is your offer now poll and peak now what is it so offer is a panel method to something called add you can add an item to queue or you can say you can offer an item to queue right and the same way when you say remove like you can remove an item from queue and you can say pull an item if there is any item pull it out right remove it out in the same way element is will give you the head of a queue whereas a peak will give you the highest peak element which is a head element or the first element of a queue now what is the main difference between these methods and these methods you can see that you know they are actually giving the same functionality the only difference is these are the methods which will give which will give which will throw an exception and this won't we'll see what exactly will these uh, things do okay. let's go back to the program so in the same program uh, let me just take uh, yeah okay let me just uh, okay comment this out so that you can have right so let me just continue with this which is q1 dot let me copy this item so that we can save some time yeah now in the place of add let me just say offer right offer of an element right oh. so what i did is i again i'm again uh, doing something like adding an element to the queue right now here let me read out something called q1 dot uh, okay let us read the peak one peak is nothing but the highest or the first value of a q let me run this now you can see highest value is 12 so in the same way let me just say sys out of q1 dot pool right and then let me read peak again pool is a same as the remove method so that's why i just you know explain the methods which are close to what we have learned and then I'm taking the special methods of a queue. But in real time, you'll never use these things. Never use these things. Only these methods will be used in real time. Right? Offer, poll, and pick. Right? Because uh, these things are something which will never give you an exception. Right? We'll see that. So now I've just uh, done something called polling one item. And then I'm checking what is a peak. Run this up. You can see 12 was a, a old head. And I removed the 12 and then 145 became my next step. The same way, copy this out with three times. You can see that. Yep. So all your three items got removed 12, 145, and 345, right? And then our latest head is 6547. Let me use one more here and let us see what exactly is our latest peak. Right? Run this. You can see latest peak is null. I'm not getting null here. You can see here that okay. 
you run this you can see latest peak item is null do it for any number of times doesn't matter right it will give you the, the state run but it will never throw you error right so these um, items are something or these internal methods are something if there is anything give me otherwise i'll just say null right that is what how it works right in the same way if you try to poll something right which is not there right let me just poll three times again right you know that there are four items in here but you are trying to poll more than that right so what happens here if i run this you can see here it will give null again right so until there is a data it will uh, work and then uh, if there is no data then yes there is no data that's why it returns null null is not nothing but a no value right it returns this so that is how your poll and peak works and obviously offer you can offer any of the item wherever you want right so they are the uh, very important six different methods we have in queues and that is how uh, queue works right and here uh, what we have seen is we have just seen uh, two different sets but always try to use second set in real time never never go for this for adding yes you can go either of this because this, this doesn't this will give you a same uh, thing it won't give any of the exceptions anyways right you can just use remove mainly on an element as a pole and a peak right so that is uh, one thing uh, in queues fine so here you can you can always check these items right if you know before uh, polling obviously you can check that whether you have got let us say uh, or i can say something like uh, what is that uh, uh, sorry size right i can always check a size right if it is greater than zero then pull it up right i can do all these things like this if anything if um, if my uh, queue size every time because this queues you will be using mainly in multi threading i will design one one of the multi threading uh, queue here we'll design that right because in real time obviously we'll be using queues in multi threading uh, situations right where uh, you want to pass some data to some other uh, okay if you remember we have used something called pipes right in multi threading uh, uh, when we are running but the pipes is completely used for streaming right but this queues can be used for complete objects sending an object reading some objects and all we'll design one of them right here you can check that it is always better to check in any collection item not only in queue right before getting any value just check whether the item i mean the collection item have got an uh, you know the uh, details or not if not just don't read them right now it is safe it is safe to do that right but anyways your queue will internally handle the exception and it will say okay if it is not there it is not there right so that is how a uh, queue works so any doubts in this queue yeah okay fine so if does it um does it only uh mm -hmm. sorry one quick question um can you use it for for also for array, array list is it only used with linked list no it won't uh, take array list as such right if i take array list right if i take array list oh, sorry you can see if i take array list right it doesn't match up right it doesn't match up mm -hmm. because array list is not an or uh, sorry uh, yeah, yes array list is not an ordered set you can take okay. a priority uh, uh, queue you have something called priority queue yeah you can take this uh, priority queue right which is uh, which will give you a same functionality again right priority queue right i'll give you the list of what exactly you can use there are a uh, few lists again right which you can actually use it in a uh, real right. time right i'll give you that once we are done with this uh, threading okay if you run this you can see it will work in the same way but only condition is you can actually map to a uh, queue with any anything which is which which will give you something called a sequence or a maintain an order right but mostly mm -hmm. uh, you know everyone will be using at least a linked list right uh because you know why because is that is something which will you know connect the items using a double linked list right internally so there won't be any of the distraction between them right 
you also have something called array uh, blocking queue right array blocking queue so this is nothing but something where you can actually mention some size here from let us say four right where you if you give four items right let me run this right i ran this up and if i take one more item here with the same value right it will take it as a save it will accept only four let me just uh, hold this up again. Yeah, it will accept only four. Okay, even if you try to enter any number of values, right? It doesn't take it, uh, and again, it won't give any issue again, right? It will accept only four items. So that is how you are actually, uh, you know. Anyways, let me just give you a few of them. Okay. So once you understand much better queue, right? Then I'll give you a small set, like right, where uh, you'll be using them in real time. Fine. Okay. So can we move on to threading? These uh, queues are synchronized. Uh, these queues are not synchronized. You have to make a queue synchronized. You have to lock it up. Yeah. I'll show you that. Yeah. We have to do it multi-threading. We have to make a code synchronized for this. Otherwise, it will hit. Yeah. Queues are, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a queues which are under util package. Uh, but if you are talking about JMS queues, yes, they are thread safe. And if you are taking talking about a thread which are IBM thread or or Linux queues, right? Yes, they are something which is which is designed for heavier data, and they are sometimes thread safe again. But again, you have to lock each and every object of uh, queue. Fine. Okay. Okay, so so was that was that your question, uh, Pushwatham? Just Jomi. Yeah, hi Jomi. Yeah. So wa was that your question? So we'll see we'll see what happens if you don't yeah. uh, lock this queue because we'll be creating a thread, right? Now I'll be creating a I mean we'll create some threads and we'll see how queue works. Okay. Okay. Let me create uh, some threads here. Let's uh, maybe. Thread one, okay, and we'll try to design one more thread. Let me see, let's thread two maybe, right? and we'll design one more serious uh, main queue. Let us. I'm just taking an example, right? Okay, fine. So here, so in this, uh, in this thread. Let us say I want to uh, insert items into queue, right? I'll just uh, uh, offer items over here, and here I just want to uh, read the items in this class, okay? Using a queue, right? Now this will be very important because see uh, where we'll be using these uh, queues is uh, in, in in there is no you know limitage for this. Let us say you are actually developing a uh, trading product. Right. I'm just taking one example. It can apply for any. It can apply for SEM projects like supply chain management or banking operations or for any even even for travel. You know, software it will be used. Now, what it is is like, let us say in trading project, right? I mean, you have sent a response. You are sorry. You have sent a request, and it will take some time to uh, you know uh, get the response, right? So until that point, you know, you can't make your uh, application to be standalone right what you have to do is you have to just send a request and create a separate thread where uh, it will be com continuously reading your stream and whenever anything gets up uh, what it uh, what your application should do is it will catch up that packet the packet is nothing but a response right and immediately it will process now now that is how you get a response that is the first point second point now whenever you get a response right so we may not know at a time how many responses we are getting right like you'll be getting you'll be bombarded with so many responses right you because you'll be getting different type of responses maybe it may be a broadcast response which is for broadcast response you don't need something called uh, a request or it can be it can be a, res a response for your request or it can be you know pushed back res response from server right server can push something called heartbeat uh, request or something right that can be one more response to your site 
so for that case what you have to do is whatever response you're getting you have to catch up them in one thread and process them in another thread let us think here that in thread one i'm catching the requests or responses whatever i'm getting and let's say i want to process them in this think that in that way right now in thread one what we'll do is uh, we'll create a queue uh, let us say object we'll just try to take in every object let us say i this may be like uh, like m o b j let us say q right is equal to null so i don't want to get an instance of this let us say i am creating my constructor here right which accepts a q which accepts a q of type object right let us say a o b j so we we'll just do m o b j q is equal to a o b j. So we just want to. I just want to maintain the same uh, q from a main q. Okay. Let us say extends uh, thread right here. Now let us call run method right. Fair. So what we'll do here is we'll try to exception here and yeah. So here what we'll do is. Uh, We'll create some for loop again. In for loop, let me take it as well as the index of some, let us say, I want to insert some 20 values. So here, yeah, now it is ready to use, which is, let us say, m o b j q dot offer, right? So before that, we'll create a pattern string. String, let us say, lstr item is equal to let's take an uh, example of some item plus some index so i'm just taking an example of we we'll just create how many items and then just say next to our item so here we what we're doing is we're actually you know um, popping i mean um, offering or adding your items in here right so here whenever the loop runs right so you have to do one thing you have to lock your queue always synchronize your queue if you give a queue and then offer an item and then unlock that right so lock it up offer unlock lock it up offer unlock that is how you should actually do it let me handle an exception here e dot get message right. now here we are actually entering some uh, items into my queue now let's get back here to through uh, let me just copy this part right. so we can use that here and we have to use something called thread2 right. let us say queue response and just uh, your read right. let me take that just read so so here let us take how we can read that this error let us on message here now here what we'll do we'll just uh, uh, say let us take an infinite loop here. Right, infinite loop here. So where uh, we want to continuously read up, right? And here again, you have to sync. Before reading again, you have to sync your read because the same queue will be used for adding this and removing this. If you do the same thing at at same point of time, right? Then there will be there will be some data loss. Right? For that, we we'll use this, and then we'll do something called let us say I have an object uh, L O B J item is equal to M O B J read dot pool. Right? Where we'll be pulling up something. Now before this poll, definitely I'll be checking something called M O B J read dot size greater than zero then pull it up right and 
for two. And then if it is there, uh, just say this is out of LOBJ item. And before this, you have to check if LOBJ item is null or not, not equal to null. If it is not null, yeah, I can print that too. So you can just make two string. Huh? Okay, good. Uh, so I've uh, created an object here. So it is running something which is an uh, infinite loop. This will never be uh, killed up again. Right? So we have created this. Fine. So in for loop, always try to. So now here we have created something called infinite loop, right? So in that situation, you should always, you know, your for inside for loop should always be in a try catch. Even if any exception happens at any place of this, you should not stop this. I should say continue. Right? Now here, whenever any exception happens in between, it can happen, right? It can happen. Right? Uh, any exception happens here, your infinite loop will never be uh, killed up. So always try to use try catch. Your for loop, if you are using infinite loop, the starting of your code should be try and the end and there should be continue. Right? It will never stop. It will never stop. Until unless you kill your application, this infinite loop will never stop. But if you are not using try catch, there is no guarantee that if you are getting any memory issues ins inside, right, it may kill up your complete application. Right? Now, so here we are reading and here we are just popping 20 items, let us say, right? Now let's get back here. Yeah, sure. Hello? Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, hello. Yeah. Back to mm -hmm. yeah. So here uh, in the try catch block, do you use any shortcut key to put that code inside the try block? Because I have never seen you copy that code. Uh, you mean uh, I write try? Yeah. I mm -hmm. I do control mm -hmm. space. Yeah. When mm -hmm. I do control space, yeah. yeah when I mm -hmm. enter, it will give me the direct one. Yeah, I know. But what about the synchronize that code? You, I have never seen you copy pasting that inside the code. How do you do that? Okay. Uh, Is there any copy? No, no, no. I mean, uh, okay. Let me just uh, do control Z here. Okay. See, mm -hmm. we have. Uh, I have already wrote this program, right? Just now. Yeah. I wrote this mm -hmm. program. I just uh, cut it and pasted it. Oh, you always do cut paste. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. thought there was no. No, 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 no. I, yeah, I did cut paste, yeah. Okay. 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 And then continue here. Okay, fine. Fine with this, Ujula. Okay. Now let's get back to main yeah, yeah. here. Okay. Sorry. So not a problem. Right. Let's get back to main here, and yeah. So let me handle this. Uh, this error of e dot get message now here what we'll do we'll just create two threads thread let us say t1 is equal to new we'll say cls uh, thread one right where we need a queue okay let us create a queue here which is uh, queue right let us say object let us say LOBJ Q is equal to new. Let me take this uh, link list. Right? Where we are just taking a link list and let me just pass this LOBJ over here. Right? And thread uh, T2 is equal to new CLS uh, thread 2 and LOBJ Q. Right? Because I want to maintain the same instance of my Q. But working in a uh, operation should be done in two different ways, right? And then say t1 dot start and t2 dot start. Right? Anyways, uh, we know that my uh, t1 thread will be killed at some time when it completes the iteration, right? We know that. But here, um, you can see that we may never guess when it will be killed up, right? Because a uh, reading queue should always be like you know uh, uh, should always be like you know it should be reading or it should be listening to the port get the queue item and then uh, read it up right and here let us say this out I just say uh, got one item in queue right in queue 
and after this let us is out of i'm just doing some uh, see, pattern here okay so it will be much better to uh, uh, check out and this item okay we have done this okay let me just call some thread sleep here the dot sleep of let us say some two or three hundred milliseconds right? and here i can see i'm not giving any uh, read uh, here read uh, sleep or if you want you can just say sleep for 50 milliseconds maybe right because always your uh, reading queue should not be sleeping for more time why because uh, in some products you should immediately dequeue your queue this is nothing but dequeuing right we call poll as a dequeue and whatever we do doing here is nq nq is nothing but adding an item to queue and dq is nothing but a polling uh, or taking out a an uh, item from a queue right so he in in real time uh, reading right you won't give this much sleep right because if you are if you are actually making 50 milliseconds wait which means you are delaying your response process for with 50 milliseconds which is not uh, correct right maybe if, if you are not getting any size obviously you are checking it out right so it will be running continuously but as of now let us take and sleep for 50 milliseconds right and after this let us say sys out of reading queue is running right? so that we will see okay whether it is running or not right now let's get back here everything is fine okay and let's get back here uh, it seems everything is fine here okay let us start right okay let me start this uh, queues again okay <coughs> you can see right we're just uh, popping out the items right so after some time the queue will be continuously reading right let me give some more uh, weight here which is just to make sure uh, you can read them let me take uh, 300 again here right i will give a same read right now here you can see it will never stop it is like you know uh, you're actually checking a continuous heartbeat or something right like you have to kill your program until you kill your program it will be running right we have already seen the infinite two things right and now let me run this program so that you can have a much better view yeah see here so if there is anything it will just pop out i'm not doing anything in my uh, insertion queue right i'm just reading from my uh, the queue which is reading it out reading this queue got a queue item right you can see here this let me just yeah okay let me kill this program here now you can see here the yeah, reading queue key reading queue is running got one item in queue and we got it right so this is how you uh, you know uh, read uh, push from one place and and actually pop it up now to answer uh Jami's question right like, let me just uh, you know take out the synchronized method over here and even here Right. and we'll see what happens here and we'll take the same sleep probably right and as there are sleep right it may not hit sometimes and there is no guarantee anyways let me run this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 19 okay fine so yeah because when we started there even if there is a millisecond gap right it won't hit again right let me take out this and take out this leaf let us see what happens it will be like uh, click right okay it was so fast that even it, it removed my old console <laughs> one sec let me stop this oops i didn't get that uh run it and stop it oh you're not uh, okay i'll do one thing i'll just kill this thread if uh, if size is zero let us say if it is greater than 
perfect for the bomber. We will kill this here. So just let me take this in. <coughs> Here, so I'm just breaking my loop. Let us say that. Done this. Why is it so many times? Come back here. Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. Every time it is being initialized to zero and it is incrementing by one, right? So that's why it is not. Uh, so clear this out go back come on man. so I is zero first and it comes in and it says okay I did a mistake again I should keep this outside the loop anyways it happens Come back and run this. Yeah, now it's fine. It killed up. And again, uh, there was no output again. Right? Run this. Uh, then everything is there. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, fine. It, it all gets in some chance. Right? You know, it will be a chance again. So you have to run multiple times right, to see uh, whether it is running or not again. Right? Anyways, we are getting uh, continuous items here, right? It's a <laughs> it's a fortunate thing that you know it is continuously reading up and polling at the same time, right? Maybe there will be, there will be some uh, gap in it, right? Which is uh, nothing over there, right? But if you are actually doing something called add, let me add it, right? And uh, let me uh, remove it, and we'll see what happens. Just they are completely. Not three safe ones. Run this. Run this. Now you can see that you know only something got printed, right? There was no uh, item there because it got some exception. That's why there is no item in here. You can see. Run this again. We'll get some item. Right? Run this again. There is some items again. If you directly pull it, right? It, it will be a situation where you may be missing something. So that's why uh, never to take any chance, but always try to synchronize your methods, right? But anyways, maybe in in you know in uh, latest you know APIs, right? In latest versions of API, Java APIs, uh, these queue uh, internal methods may become a thread safe method, right? It may become because uh, thread is something which is mostly used in something called multi-threading items, right? So that's how. It goes. So you can just see items over here. It will never it will never stop. Right, it will never be distracted. How many times ever you run it up, right? It doesn't matter, but always it will give you the same output because we are actually making a synchronized program out of this, right? So it is causing so many requests. So that is how we actually do, uh, you know, uh, use queues, right? Where the reading part is important. Uh, we are more interested on reading part because writing part. You always you don't have to do in a uh, separate thread as such, right? I don't have to actually create separate thread. I don't have to. Why? Because I can write the same program in my static or a main method itself, right? Where let us say I am just stopping this t one. Let us say right here. What I am doing is I am just doing the same thing. Whatever is being done there, and I'll take this LOBG here. That's it, right? Because uh, items here. Uh, it doesn't matter from where you're actually getting an item, but what matters is how you're reading the item. Right? You can see the same output, right? right? Because queues can be queued from anywhere, anywhere. It can be from direct method, right? Where I'm not creating any thread. I'm just appending something and I'm trying to read that, right? So if I remove this, right? If I remove something like sleep here, then it will be a real-time uh, reading stuff. And you can see so much of gap in between reading. See, it got 
one item and reading and it is waiting for some time and again it will be. That is how uh, it comes up again. Where you do so, the main part is the reading part. Where always try to synchronize that cue, right, and read up the elements. Fine. So that is what is uh, all about the cue and how it actually uh, reads up a cue and all. And where, where do we use uh, pull and uh, remove and add? Right. And always try to use uh, methods which are actually these methods. Right. Now. So that is about a queue. Now let's get back to sets now, and let us see uh, things in here. Uh, and as of now, I hope you have understood about the pulse of collections, so how it works in different ways, right? So if you have understood that, it is the same thing what we are actually going on. Let us see how these things work. Let us touch upon uh, sets. Close all. Let me take an uh, class and this say CLS sets one maybe yeah so in this again <coughs> so you have something called hash set right hash set which is same as your the behavior of hash whatever item start with hash set or map or anything right so we'll be checking out maps anyways right will be the same behavior as an array list right which will be in a same as something called uh, array manner and uh, I mean the arrangement will be in an array manner and uh, you know details like if you try to insert any item in between anything right obviously it will actually have to move all the items right the performance issue will be the same even in something called hash set right? first we'll see how it works it works in the same way she is let me take up a string here right or let me take an integer now Main question, can I use int here? Guys, any answers there? Can I use no, int? No. So any uh, no, reason you for that? No, you can't. Um, because you have to uh, call upon the class integer instead of int. Yeah, perfect. So I cannot use a end prim2 type in anywhere, right? Because this hash, uh, hash set is, I mean, any collection item needs something called some object type. Your primitive types are never object types. You have to use corresponding wrapper classes. Int wrapper class is nothing but integer. So that's why even before I've used integer. Because int is not an object type. But the wrapper class is an object type. Fine? Perfect. Okay. That's it. Okay. Then addition, everything will be same. You can see the same uh, things in here. Right? Let's say 458. And obj dot add of it is a six seventy three obj dot add of one obj dot hundred right. So we have just added some items again. Now uh, for the same uh, hash set, we can use again the same iterators like we'll use so for each first. If you see for each again, you can see that each integer item you can just read up. Let me just call it as a lint item, right? And just say sys out of your lint items, right? You can read that. So when I run this program, you can see the same output being coming up, right? Or what you can do is this is the first way. Or so whatever we have done for collections, if at uh, least right, you can do everything. Let us say I want to read it using index. Let us say right. I can do that. What I'll do is out of here. We have to use something called size again, right? Because for all collection items, you have size. OBJ dot size. Right? Here what I'll do here is uh, OBJ dot get. So which is we have seen uh, in our uh, yeah, I'm getting get. Okay, class here. Okay, we have an attack to worry. We should get and get value here. I don't know why it is not there. We have an add here. Yeah, should get and get class here. Yeah, OBJ. 
is has set of digits dot get uh, Okay, why don't we have numbers here? So I hope I'll write it down. I'll just get back to you on this. Okay, why we don't have my pen? Okay. Yeah. I'll give you the answer for this, right? Yeah. Or I can use iterator. Iterator, which is uh, I can restrict again with this integer, right? Where your iterator itr is equal to I can say obj dot iterator. Okay. Again, this works in the same way as we are actually working uh, in current lists, where I can just take while you know oops, while your itr dot as next okay. and then you can just say sys out of your itr dot um, um, itr dot next okay. now it will give you same output which is okay. it will give you the same output and in the same way uh, we have something called obj dot obj dot oops Again, it is not there because it is taking something which is same items. Okay, doesn't matter. I was just checking for list iterator because list iterator can move either ways, right? But seems sets don't have that in uh, latest version called seven version, right? That's fine. So here, let me add one more thing, which is a duplicate value. Add of 458, and let me add one more item which is. Uh, add up some one again. I'm just adding the two things which are duplicate values, right? One and hundred. Let me run this. Right? You can see uh, four fifty eight and one are only ones, right? It got replaced anyways, but it will be always, you know, the same instance will be maintained in sets, right? There won't be any duplicate values will be uh, added up here, right? So that is how. Uh, any any of the set works right in the same way you can remove an item right obj dot remove right the same thing works for all like remove an item right if you want any object you can remove and you can actually remove all like you can compare two uh, sets you know, of the intersection part and retain right you can compare again two sets to actually see what are common right can do that. Okay, let us say you're just removing some 458 from object to seven. I'm taking this a four here. You can see yeah, we got the mode here. Right. Because we are just removing after iterating one item, right? So that's why we got to rotate here and that's why you got removed over here. So that is what it is. So that is what uh, is the behavior. The main difference is uh, it won't allow uh, duplicate values. That's it. Right? The main difference will be the same thing in here and it seems it has also uh, yeah this hash set also all the sets also we cannot uh, iterate through index we have to use something called get uh, maybe it's, it's always better to go for iterator because iterator is something which is specially designed for complete collection items you can see that iterator will you will never be able to use iterator for any other items no never right it is completely designed for something which is which follows uh, a generic right which follows some classes called generics and in java collections only collection follows the generic class what is a generic class and all anyways we'll be learning once the collections uh, in in collection itself once the collection parts are done right we'll see that now in the same way you have something called linked hash set right linked hash set here again so this works in the same way To run this you can see the same output only thing is it maintains an order that's it it maintains an order in which you are actually making uh, the entry right the same way you are making the entry it will actually uh, add and what wherever you remove it will be removed at that place and right the remaining everything will be same as such that is nothing but a now 
the next one is uh, which is uh, something like tree set tree set let me take this tree set ones right now I've given a values which is in some scrim build way and if I run this you can see it follows it always sorts up your details right it always sorts up your details whatever if you're removing or adding anything again it maintains two things first thing it will maintain uh, the unique values and it will sort up each and every item okay we'll check this out tree set and you know we'll check the internal pattern of tree set how it works and all right and we'll see uh, uh, how uh, how actually it is uh, you know sorting out the elements and if you know that it you know, internally it uses something called tree sort and i hope uh, you know what is tree sort right anyways i'll be explaining how tree sort works right we have many sortings like bubble sort and all but java uses tree sort internally and and even in tree sort uh, to pointing out uh, each and every element it uses something uh, some pointers internally right i'll give you the design of how this tree sort is being done right in uh, uh, in next class right so we we'll just wind up here for today i hope uh, you have uh, got an idea on how queues works and on and how we can create a thread for this right so that yeah, there is something which will be using in real time for both web, web applications and for uh, desktop applications right yeah and in next class we'll see how uh, the sorting works uh, what is the relation to this and how the sorting works and then we'll learn the complete maps this is something which is again an important uh, entity in collections so fine guys so that will be all for today